So hello, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Uh, I'm still on James Goodwin here, so I probably have to press a button, don't I? Yeah. I'm grateful to James for introducing the subject. He's done some of the um, uh, difficult work of uh, presenting almost incomprehensible uh, graphs uh, and trying to explain them. Uh, and I'm going to continue with that, uh, that uh, job. But I'm also uh, grateful uh, to him for ending on an optimistic note, because I'm very much aware when uh, I talk to an audience about understanding ageing, uh, while I'm talking about uh, one of civilization's most uh, impressive um, uh, achievements, um, I'm also talking quite a lot about death, disability and uh, disease uh, 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 in the way that we illustrate uh, what ageing is. Uh, so I too uh, would like to um, uh, convey a, a sense of uh, positivity and uh, optimism about ageing uh, and I've flung in one or two slides uh, which uh, illustrate that point of view. So uh, let me just uh, explain why I'm here. Recently I, I took over as the, um, uh, as the lead for the National Institute for Health Research uh, coordinating uh, clinical research network, coordinating centre um, uh, specialty cluster, uh, which probably doesn't mean a lot to you, but the CRN coordinating centre uh, is responsible for uh, ensuring uh, that people have the opportunity uh, to participate in research um, in uh, the NHS and that uh, the uh, NHS uh, is able to support research studies. So we're about uh, helping the NHS to, uh, to do research and helping uh, people to participate in research. Uh, so uh, we're about, in terms of dementia, uh, we've got some responsibility for uh, helping to recruit uh, into what are called National Institute for Health Research portfolio studies. Uh, and that this is an important component of the Prime Minister's uh, Dementia Challenge 2020. Uh, there's a research uh, component to that to challenge and we're part of that. We also have some responsibility for training the next generation of clinical research researchers and, and we're uh, participating in and uh, sponsoring um, a, uh, a priority setting partnership on multimorbidity and we'll talk a bit about multimorbidity uh, as part of this uh, talk about understanding ageing. So, before we get into the meat and advert, you've already seen uh, this advert, it's about uh, joining dementia research. There's a national initiative to sign as many people up as we can who put their hand up and say, well, I don't mind being involved in dementia research. I don't have dementia at the moment, but I'm happy to be a, a, a control. Um, I'm happy to be approached about uh, participating in research. Uh, I do have dementia and would like to participate in research. Um, Join Dementia Search uh, wants to hear from you um, and um, there's a stand uh, up on the first floor uh, where you can go and find out more about it and uh, they'll sign you up if you want to sign up there and then and give you instructions how to do it if you want to take them home. So the final thing to say about me is that I'm from the Newcastle University Institute for Ageing um, and uh, if you want to know more about uh, us uh, then by all means uh, please visit the uh, website uh, which is um, uh, newcastle.ac.uk forward slash ageing. <coughs> Whoops. Uh, have we gone back? Yes. Uh, so I illustrate my talks with um, pictures of older people doing the things that I enjoy doing uh, to remind the audience that um, uh, what we're aiming for uh, when we uh, talk about um, Healthy age, health in old age, uh, and also to uh, um, uh, just uh, lift my uh, spirits uh, as I uh, prepare to talk about um, uh, death and disability and um, uh, uh, disease and old age. Um, and the point about uh, the point about um, uh, putting positive images of older people is that we do uh, celebrate uh, aging. We celebrate the aging. Uh, process. Is there anybody in the audience with a birthday today? Go on, put your hand up if you've got a birthday today. This week? Yep, there's usually several in the audience who've got a birthday this week. 
At this point, uh, sometimes I sing happy birthday, uh, but I've just put a slide up. Very happy, many, many happy returns uh, for, uh, for uh, this week. And uh, of course, it's been scientifically proven that birthdays are good for you. Um, they, uh, it's been shown that the more birthdays you have, the longer you live. So, uh, so there's, there's all sorts of good reasons to celebrate ageing, but what are we celebrating? What, what, what do we mean when we talk about ageing in our population? So this is where we get into graphs and charts and uh, what have you. So these are um, population pyramids. Um, and uh, this particular sequence of uh, pyramids, uh, the, each, each of these uh, bars is, a, is a, an age group starting at uh, uh, childhood and going all the way up to uh, uh, 90 plus. Uh, and uh, this is the global population. Uh, actually, in the UK, we're uh, way off to the right in, in these uh, charts already. Uh, and by the 1970s, we'd already moved to uh, uh, um, more like this sort of uh, appearance. So what, what's happened to the population, this demonstrates is that um, over the years, we've had fewer children <coughs> and more of these uh, children are surviving into adulthood and old age so that the pyramid is flattening out and becoming uh, a column. So the consequence of having fewer children, uh, which is a trend in this country which began uh, well over 100 years ago, um, is that the population uh, uh, becomes uh, a different shape and that there are more older people in the population. So more older people in the population, at least partly because we're having uh, fewer children, partly because um, uh, those children, as uh, James illustrated, uh, are very likely to survive into adulthood. Um, and uh, these days, of course, people who survive into adulthood are quite likely, uh, are very likely to reach old age and do so in good health and uh, therefore experience longer life. Um, and this is how uh, life expectancy has changed over the past 150 years. James has also made this point, so I won't dwell on it too much. This chart is quite a famous chart, uh, which shows the, um, each of the plots, each of the dots on the chart. This is the, the uh, years from 1840 to 2040. Each of the dots on the chart uh, is uh, the uh, life expectancy of the country with the longest life expectancy for that year. So this year here it was mm, New Zealand. Um, and the chart shows how life expectancy uh, has risen in an almost linear fashion over the 150 year, 200 year uh, period uh, at a rate of about, uh, uh, increasing at a rate of about two years per decade that passes. Um, and that's that's a, a key statistic, which is a hugely impressive uh, uh, achievement for humanity. Um, there are lots of ways of expressing it. Uh, my colleague Tom Kirkwood has a, a number of uh, ways of telling audiences how uh, life expectancy has changed. But um, if you imagine sitting through a one-hour lecture, uh, then life expectancy uh, on this uh, measure is changing by 12 minutes uh, during the one-hour lecture. Another way of thinking about it is... Uh, uh, like having an extra 20% for free, so you go down to the supermarket and suddenly uh, they've knocked 20% off everything. Um, it's that sort of magnitude of uh, achievement. Uh, it's huge and it's important and it's something to celebrate. Again, building on what James has uh, told you, he showed you some uh, uh, charts which show uh, changes in mortality over the uh, decades. Uh, this is a chart which uh, breaks that down a little to show um, disease-specific mortality. And here are cardiovascular diseases. This is uh, 1950 here. This is about 1911. This is about 2011. So cardiovascular diseases uh, reducing. Um, here we can see at the uh, beginning of the uh, 20th century uh, significant reductions in infectious diseases. Uh, and this is uh, cancers which have uh, uh, stayed pretty much the same by comparison. Okay, so people are, there are more older people because the population shape has changed. People are living longer and life expectancy is continuing to uh, increase. 
Um, and over that period, uh, the mix of diseases in the population uh, is uh, changing. Uh, death from cardiovascular disease becoming much less uh, common, for example. Um, and as James has explained, the relative uh, prevalence of uh, uh, other disorders, such as uh, dementias, uh, uh, may be rising. Same sort of message as uh, James. This is a, a list of uh, diseases. It doesn't matter uh, what diseases uh, they are, but you can see uh, that um, uh, this is the percentage of all deaths. So 10% uh, of all deaths in 2013 related to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and uh, about 10% of all deaths related to ischemic heart disease. And this is the change between 2003 and 2013, and similarly, the reduction of ischemic heart disease. Part of this, of course, is changes in uh, the way we um, approach to the diagnosis. <coughs> this is another chart that shows uh, a whole range of uh, disorders. Um, and the point about it is that the, each line is a specific disease and the grey bit shows you the proportion of the population with, in this case, hearing impairment, who have hearing impairment plus at least one other pathology. And the black bit is the bit, uh, is the numbers of people in the population who have hearing impairment uh, with um, uh, no other pathology. So they've just got hearing impairment. And this is taken from a cohort of 85 year olds. So most 85-year-olds uh, have at least uh, one other, uh, with some um, uh, measurable impairment, have at least one other um, uh, disorder. And in fact, uh, the average number of uh, disorders for 85-year-olds um, in uh, this study uh, was somewhere between four and five. And this is the chart which you've already seen. Uh, which uh, just illustrates that the proportion of people with five or more, or four or more, or three or more uh, conditions increases by increasing age between 60 and 100. Um, and uh, people in the older age group uh, uh, very commonly have uh, multiple conditions. Okay. So I'd like to move from uh, explaining that aging is a, uh, happening at a population level, that there are more older people, the older people are living longer and experiencing health differently. To think a little bit about what we mean by health in old age, if we know that uh, in old age um, we are going to uh, experience multiple chronic conditions. So here's a, a World Health Organization chart uh, which um, points out uh, that health in old age is a multifactorial uh, uh, construct. It's related at the individual level to behaviours, uh, to age-related changes in the uh, body, uh, to genetics, uh, to the presence of disease, and in the context uh, that we're talking about here, um, the uh, presence of multiple uh, chronic conditions, uh, which increase in uh, 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 joint uh, prevalence with increasing age. Uh, but there are also environmental uh, dimensions uh, to, that influence uh, health in old age, uh, including uh, housing uh, and technologies. Of course, uh, the WHO has put the Zimmer frame in as uh, a key technology, uh, but we tend to think of, um, of uh, sort of digital technologies these days as the assistive technologies with promise for the uh, future. So maybe that graphical change uh, as time goes on. Um, Trans, fa uh, social factors such as transport uh, and social facilities for uh, social interaction, uh, engagement and, uh, with uh, others and participation uh, in society. Okay, so health is a, a multi-dimensional construct um, and older people uh, experience health with uh, multiple conditions. Here's some uh, more data from the Newcastle 85 plus study about 1,085 year olds um, studied in uh, Newcastle upon Tyne uh, in a, st 
uh, project that's still ongoing, uh, but began about 10 years ago now. And this simply shows that, that um, uh, it doesn't show anything, does it? There you go. Um, this is the disease count. Four or five diseases are the, are the most uh, frequent counts, four, five, and six. So um, the Newcastle 85-year-olds have four, five, or six uh, illnesses. Um, uh, the impact of these illnesses in, in terms of disability is that um, this is a disability score. So people with a score of 15 or 16 are severely disabled, and uh, people with a score of one or two um, or zero um, ha are um, uh, somewhat affected by their multiple pathology, except of course for those with a score of zero, which was a fifth. So a fifth have no disability, and a further third or so um, have uh, uh, little or, uh, I don't want to belittle people's uh, disabilities, but in terms of uh, how bad it could be, uh, their disability is uh, manageable uh, or trivial or, or small. So finally, uh, how, do, how do these people rate their health? Uh, and of course, what we find is that the vast majority of people rate their health as good, very good, or excellent. So these are 85-year-olds with multiple diseases, some disability. And when you ask them, uh, what's your health like? They say, oh, my health is good, my health is excellent, my health is very good. Um, and this is a challenge to our notion of uh, health and uh, the ways in which we um, conceptualise and measure it. Uh, here's just some more data from um, a, a Danish study. Uh, and as time is running short, it, we could, it sort of finesses the uh, point a bit but doesn't add... Uh, anything, so I'll slip on to the next slide. Um, the point about the next slide is it shows uh, one of the uh, difficulties of doing research with 85 year olds who are uh, living in the community. Uh, when the uh, research team uh, went out to start collecting data from the 85 year olds who'd consented uh, to uh, be participants in this study, uh, they very often found that they were out. Um, and so we take that as a positive message that 85-year-olds uh, uh, like the rest of us uh, enjoy going dancing and shopping and all the other things you do out of the house. So in the last two minutes, here's uh, the World Health Organization summary about what's needed for healthy ageing. And of course, it'll come as no surprise that it's multidimensional and that actually the alignment of health systems for the needs of older people uh, only constitutes one component. Um, the other components are changing the way we think about ageing and older people, uh, creation of age-friendly environments, and the development of systems for long-term care. And sitting listening to the talks uh, all the way through uh, this morning and uh, uh, before lunch, uh, it seems to me that many of these uh, messages are similar to the messages that uh, uh, people are talking about, specifically in relation to uh, the dementias and uh, Alzheimer's disease and so on. So um, what's needed for healthy ageing? Um, here's a, a, a list which is uh, similar to uh, when people produce th these lists, they produce a similar thing. So employment and retirement transition support, <coughs> civic participation and social inclusion. These are things that we need to experience uh, uh, health in old age. The opportunity for lifelong learning opportunities to participate in the digital economy um, and uh, access to services to meet health and care needs, opportunities to indulge uh, in physical activity and nu uh, nutrition uh, support where required, um, uh, care and thought about the use of medications and of course support for carers. So that's a sort of manifesto for healthy ageing which uh, uh, covers a range, a big range of um, uh, topics and dimensions. Uh, and finally, um, the last picture of uh, something I very much hope uh, to be able to do uh, when I get uh, to his age. And that's me, thank you. <laughs>